Welcome to another episode of Doing It Cheap. Hey folks, you've asked for it, I've been promising it, and here it is. I want to show you how to make some good brown gravy. And if you get a chance, let's old Joe Diffie his song good brown gravy I, I i think of that song all the time i love that song joe diffie good brown gravy he's good man anyway uh let's get right to it let's see how to make us some good brown gravy well before i forget it i need to tell granny's homestead that i do have at least one plate and a fork she teases me because all I have is star. All she ever sees is styrofoam plates and plastic forks. So there you go. Just to let you know I do have one. <laughs> well, alrighty then. We are going to make us some good brown gravy. I've been promising it for long enough. Anyhow, um, you could just put oil in your pan. You could. Put some lard in your pan. But this works so well, like if you just fried you some chicken or you fried you some pork. In this case, I'm just gonna cut up some little pieces of bacon to get me some grease. But, um, oh, and this is that bacon I was telling you about. Great value, natural hardwood smoked bacon. Really tasty. But anyhow, um, I'm just gonna cut me up some of this and, and brown it off in a skillet because I, I just want the grease off of it. Anyway, whether you're frying chicken, you're making breakfast with some bacon or sausage, as long as you got you some oil or lard, and in my opinion, your best gravy comes from when, when you've been cooking some kind of meat. You get that crust, you get that little bit of pieces off that chicken, you know, when you're frying some chicken or pork chops or anything. So in my opinion, that's where you're getting your best uh, your best flavor for your gravy. Like I said, we just use vegetable oil, we use lard, we use shortening. I'm just gonna brown this off in a skillet. So we'll, we'll come back a little bit after this is done. Well, while we got this bacon render in here, frying up, I'll talk to you a little bit about, about your cookware. When me and my wife first got married, we got us a set of Paul Revere, Revere Ware. Had the copper bottom. It's pretty good for an entry level set of pots and pans. And I would encourage all you little girls out there that's going to get married, you put on your wish list or your registry or whatever for people to buy you some quality cookware. Now this is a stainless steel pan with a real thick bottom so it cooks very evenly. You don't want a thin bottom pot or pan. You want a nice thick one so you've got the same heat all over your skillet. Uh, but if uh, if you've never, and, and uh, you ladies out there that may be going to buy a gift for the new bride or a, it's a wedding shower or whatever they call it, hell, buy, buy them a piece of cast iron cookware. Buy them a skillet. Nothing else, buy them that little skillet like I cook them eggs in. And uh, heck, print out a link to videos like mine or anybody else's out there that you like on how to take care of that skillet, because you're doing them a you're doing them a great disservice if you don't buy them something that's quality and something that'll last. My wife and I still have to this day a Pyrex bowl that was given to us as a wedding gift. Christmas Day, 1977, and we still have it to this day. Pyrex is tough. I've got a Pyrex measuring cup over here. And man, I mean, they'll last forever. So, you know, get good quality stuff. Uh, and those of you that's out there having to buy your own, check out yard sales, check out garage sales, Goodwill. But now Walmart carries this Lodge cookware. And you a lot better off with one good quality skillet than you are with a bunch of cheap crap. One thing about a cast iron skillet, the handle will never come off. You can buy lids for them. You can uh, 
there's there's all kinds of different cast iron stuff. Go to the lodge. Um, go to the lodge um, website. I don't know if it's lodgemanufacturing.com, whatever. Just look up lodge cast iron cookware. You'll you'll find it. But look at all the different things that they've uh, got in cast iron cookware. I, w I would love to have a piece of every bit of it. Anyhow, I've just about got what I need here. This is typical if you was cooking breakfast. And uh, is that all the grease right there? So this would be a typical time, you know, you've cooked a few slices of bacon, you, you know, for breakfast and getting ready to eat. I mean, this gravy is going to be good if you put it over scrambled eggs, if you put it over hash brown taters, put it over your biscuits. It don't matter. This this right here is going to be good brown gravy. And uh, let me get let me get that plate that that uh, Granny's homestead is wondering if I had one. You get that plate? I know, Granny. I'm keep picking at you, don't I? <laughs> I'm glad you're a good sport. Anyway, let me uh, let me get this bacon out of here, and then we'll start making us some good brown gravy. And it don't take long. It ain't like them other videos. I mean, this don't take long at all. You see how you get that that crust that build up from when you're frying something on, on this type of skillet. If this had been cast iron, that would become part of your seasoning right there. But anyway, we're going to use this whisk and try to bring those little pieces up off the bottom. So let me make sure it's good and hot. I'm going to turn it up just a smidgen more. Okay. You see how that how that flour is already sizzling the minute it hits? That's good. That's real good. That's what you're after right there. And what's going to happen, you watch this stuff turn dark, turn brown. This is how you get your good brown gravy. And also, that's coming up off that skillet a little bit. I already got to add a little bit of water. Whoa, that steam is hot. Add some more flour. Now here's where you want to salt and pepper it. You know, if you want to get you some salt and pepper on that, you want to do it in here while it's cooking. But see how that's already, see how brown that is? This is how you get that good brown gravy. And that's from your, your meat fats. And if I'd used milk, you'd get more of that white gravy. But we're not after white gravy. This is your good old traditional brown gravy. Man, look at that. I'm gonna get some more water. Now you could keep adding flour and you could keep adding water and get quite a bit of gravy, but you've only got so much grease in there. So it would only support it for, you know, so high. But there's your good brown gravy. Now I'll, I'll let that come to a good, a good boil, and that stuff right there be ready. So make sure you put your salt and pepper to it. Just had my wife get me one of them blood pressure things, see how my blood pressure was doing. Cause hell, I ain't been to a doctor in shit. I don't know, long time. And so my blood pressure is up a little bit, just a little bit above what it should be. So I looked up, you know, how to how to uh, reduce your blood pressure. It says one thing: reduce stress. All right. Well, we got Obama in office trying to take our guns. I don't think I can reduce my stress there. It says cut back on salt. Well, I can do that. So that's why you're not seeing me salt anything now, except yeah, I did salt that pork loin so y'all can see it. But uh, I'm cutting back on adding salt. He said, uh, cut out your alcohol. That sounds like my homemade wine, damn it. And uh, 
is this hay fat ass lose about a hundred pounds. I scared myself to death. I stepped on a daggum scale yesterday after eating all this damn good food I've been making. Cause I make most of these videos when my wife ain't here. And there ain't nobody else eat this but me and I don't want to go to waste. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I stepped on daggum scales that said 288 pounds. My God, what a fat ass. I sure as hell don't want to join the 300 club. So I reckon I'm going to have to start cutting back. I lost 75 pounds in three months in Iraq one time on purpose, uh, a diet of my own creation. And I want to introduce that to y'all later after I get started on it. But folks, there's a good brown gravy. This, this is a shout out to Justin Fink. Justin uh, sent me a message. And he said he sure would like to see how to make that good brown gravy. Well, there it is, right there. Now, if you want it thicker, you just let that simmer some more, and it, all that steam is water leaving. You can add more flour to it. It's just whatever suits you, because we have gravy right now. I can also just turn the heat off, and this will thicken up. So, folks, there's your good brown gravy. It's time to get some biscuits. Get you some homemade biscuits. Check out my video on how, how to make biscuits. They're easy. If you, don't worry if you ain't got milk. All you gotta have is lard and flour. A little bit of water. Let me get a piece of bread and sample this. I can't cook nothing without sampling it. Gotta make sure it's good. Of course, it's gonna have that flavor from that bacon in it too. It's another reason you don't have to really season it hard and heavy. Man, this would be good over some scrambled eggs. Mmm. Folks, that right there is some good brown gravy. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. Eh, a little bit of mold never hurt nobody. Good brown gravy. Well, let's eat. Well, folks, there you have it. Some good brown gravy. Man, you talk about good, too. Oh, mm-mm. And delicious. Wasn't that easy to make? All I did is fry up some bacon. Grease is already in the pan. Sprinkle a little flour on it, stir it up, add a little water. That's it. That's good brown gravy. If you wanted it thicker, if you wanted more, you could add more flour that would thicken it up. You can add more water, build you more of a volume. But it's just me and the dogs. So, got me some over some bread. This bread is starting to get old, so put me some good brown gravy on it and bring her back to life. Folks, oh, see Granny, there it is. Folks, have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.